Hey everyone, um, so if we've just talked about requirements and the next two lectures 7.2 and 7.3 are all about a little bit more focus on how you would capture those. Um, so on that like uh, part of that requirements engineering, like how do you actually express these things? Because in 7.1 requirements intro, we talked a lot about this is like the process you follow, but what does it actually mean in reality? So two ways that we're going to capture the requirements or an understanding of the problems to solve um, are through use cases and user stories. Now use cases is the first one we're going to look at um, and use cases are essentially um, kind of like recipes like if you if you want to start from a really simple example they're just workflows or recipes that you follow right like like a typical consumer or user behavior tends to follow a pattern they tend to do things right like if you're built if you're making a um, you know a kitchen right someone says we need to we need to design requirements for a kitchen well you don't just sit down and say like it needs a dishwasher it needs a sink it needs a fridge it needs some cupboards or something you actually have to think about like what what is the u what is like the use of this kitchen for someone okay well most people go to the kitchen for five reasons right they go and they get something out of the fridge they prepare it on the bench they wash it up sometimes they go and make dinner they use the stove they put it you know what i mean like you can you can break how things actually go into quite concrete things because in life in most things a lot of what people do is quite similar most of the time. You know, like an ATM, for instance. Think about your ATM. Like you go to an ATM to get cash out. There's a hundred things you can do with an ATM. You can make deposits, you can make withdrawals, you can get this much cash, that much cash, print a receipt, no receipt. But most of the time, people are actually gonna follow a fairly standard pattern. There's gonna be a lot of commonality on a very few focused things. So describing these key use cases um, is a very helpful way for everyone to understand how an app works and like a good example is if you're building something like UNSW dreams right where we haven't even given you any use cases um, it's like it can be hard because then everything you develop is in a vacuum you're like oh we can do this we can do that we can do this we can do that we can do that and they're all kind of separate as opposed to coming at it and thinking well most people are gonna log in and then they're gonna check a channel and send some messages and understanding that flow if you will so when we look at use cases um, Usually most use cases are representing a dialogue or an interaction between the user and the system. Now you don't have to think of system like a literal software system. That example I gave before about the kitchen, in that case the kitchen is the system, right? Like when a person goes into a kitchen and makes food or prepares food or does something, a use case would essentially describe a dialogue or an interaction between the user, a person, and the system kitchen. Um, and all it's trying to do is help us understand the behavior to achieve some kind of business goal. Um, most use case diagrams are also based on this idea that there's usually an action reaction. So again, you talk about like user and system, person and kitchen, um, they do things, they come into the kitchen, right? Um, they open the fridge and the fridge responds by showing them the food and then they close the fridge and then they go, you know, open the dishwasher and the dishwasher kind of responds by showing them what's in it. Um, obviously a physical example it's harder to think of the responses but if you think about an app or some kind of software it's a lot easier right because you think okay like you have a banking app you log into your app it gives you your balance you click on pay it gives you this screen you click on from and it gives you a list you know you, like you can paint it out like that this is a very very visual use case diagram but this is an example of a use case diagram it's kind of in this one is storyboarded like you're writing a like a script of some sort for a movie um, you know the first step someone goes up to an ATM and the ATM says enter your pin and then you know you enter your pin ATM responds verifies you talks to the bank you can see in this diagram here they're making it a bit more complex by not just showing the interaction between the user and the ATM but also between the ATM and the bank you know, because sometimes there are multifaceted aspects like this where, you know, the ATM is talking to the bank. It has to figure out how much money you have and then the ATM talks to you again. And then it gives you your cash, right? Like these are very straightforward things. I won't dwell on these extensively because um, I, I think most of you get this. Uh, it's just one way of representing it. But whether we're representing it with this or 
text or any kind of any other thing, we're telling a story that describes a dialogue between people and systems. So um, we have a list of steps, we have use case diagrams, there's like tons of different representations, and these are not extensive, it's not like there's only three types. This is a book that we share with you, which none of you will read, but we share it because that's what we do. Um, there's like a Cockburn style of use case diagrams, um, which, you know, there's, uh, there's just so many different ways to describe these again. And like, often it depends on what kind of industry you're in as well. Um, Cause a lot of like more corporate -y things might have like bigger, more complex things. Um, a lot of the time B2B or business to business applications are more complicated. So the use cases are a bit more variable. Whereas if you're building a consumer product for like retail customers, when I say re, whenever I say retail customers, I'm literally referring to like people like you and me, you know, like you using a, well, you logging into my UNSW, right? Um, that's a product, right? It's a tool, it's some software. You're the, the user, but I wouldn't call you a retail user because like, typically a retail user is just like literally like normal people off the street, right? Like that's why they call those like retail stores where you go in and you get a t-shirt or you pick up some food or something. Um, as opposed to, you know, more specific things. Um, but there are different kinds of styles there. So we showed you one here. Um, another way is to do uh, a, a text-based use case where you essentially, you maybe describe the use case, um, you describe the goal, you describe the scope, um, you describe some preconditions, as in like what 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 is established prior to this use case going ahead. So, for instance, in this diagram, uh, a precondition might be that a user has money in their account, or that you know an ATM is functioning, right? Because you know ATMs sometimes don't function, or even better, like an ATM has enough cash in it; it has at least ten thousand dollars in it. These are all preconditions, for instance, that you could write down. Um, you could define what is a successful start and a successful end. You could define the user themselves, like who is the actual like user in question. Um, and like you don't, you wouldn't have to describe all of these, but the point is you can do it in a textual sense. It doesn't need to be diagrams where you actually just describe the use case. Um, and you know, for something like an ATM, the example we mentioned there, right? It's like, you know, you're trying to withdraw money. The goal is to um, withdraw money from their accounts without entering the bank. The preconditions are that the customer has an account with the bank. <coughs> um, it's a successful interaction if the customer has the money they needed to withdraw, and it's a failed if the customer has no money, uh, etc. You can kind of write these down. Um, but this is more this is more trying to describe the use case broadly. Um, if you were doing it in a text form, this just describes the setting. It doesn't really describe like the actual um, motions of going through it. So if we were to try and describe what actually happens, we would need to then actually describe the steps, you know, and describing steps is not difficult. It's like a recipe. Like you, I hope you've all made a cake before or some muffins or some cookies sometime in your life. You know what it's like. You just, there's a series of steps you follow, you know, so step one, ATM asks customer for a pin, customer enters pin, ATM asks bank to verify pin and account, bank informs ATM of validity, right? And we just like move through these, um, these steps. So you kind of have these options of describing use cases um, either in uh, either in extremely visual ways, um, or <coughs> sorry, um, or you can describe them in more textual ways depending on how you feel about it. The benefit of text-based descriptions is that you can generally convey more information. Um, the benefit of visual descriptions is that you can generally. Um, uh, what would you say? Like, the, even though you can't convey as much information as easily, you are able to convey it clearer, right? Because people respond to visuals very clearly compared to text. So yeah, there's a series of steps. You can go and read more about use case diagrams. Um, <coughs> probably the only other type of common use case diagram that we haven't talked about is, um, uh, I don't know what the name of it is, but a common way that you might be interested in drawing it is something, um, trying to see if there's one here. 
Because, like, a lot of the time you don't draw cartoons and you don't write text. You'll be doing something a little bit more, um, you know, maybe like this, where you'll kind of be like, you know, you'll kind of have a, like a column nearly of your, your user or your actor, um, and then you'll kind of have a column or two that describes the system. So, you know, if I was doing this um, for, like, the ATM, maybe you'll have, like, the user here and the ATM here and the bank here. And these are all like three different things, right? Like user, bank, or ATM, um, bank, like this. Uh, you know, and you might start off here and it's like, you know, the user, um, or, you know, the ATM, oops. Yeah, the ATM like asks for a pin. Asks for pin, you know, then like the user enters a pin. So it's kind of like chronological, like it moves down, right? Like you move from the top to the bottom. And then after they enter the pin, you know, the, the ATM talks to the bank and it it checks the balance and gets the balance and then that returns it to the user. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're like, check balance, get balance, display balance, like this. Um, so this is another way to draw use case diagrams where you're essentially just like showing the flow, like how, how things move between it. And I like this particular expression of it because it plays to the idea which we discussed at the start um, which is the idea that um, it represents a dialogue between the user and the system because that's what's happening here, right? It's like the user talking to the system and in this case it's more complicated because we have the ATM system talking to another system. Um, so, you know, yeah, that's, that's actually all there is to talk about on use cases. It's pretty straightforward. Are there any questions about use cases? It's a pretty quick topic to get through. I doubt there'll be many questions, but just for good measure, here's a poll anyway for you all. Cool, okay, well, thanks everyone.